everybody, Gina DeLuca here. I am super excited to be part of this little piggy's Valentine's Day collaboration. So uh, yeah, we have Valentine's Day colors. I have various shades of pink and red. And the colors that we'll be using today, we have this little piggy's Golden Peach. This is a really pretty color. Uh, it's the peach color and it's kind of got like a goldish pink color shift going on in there. I'm going to show you how I'm mixing this in a moment. So that one is not mixed up yet. And then we have Sangria, which is a beautiful deep berry color and also one of my favorite adult beverages. We have Arteza's Bordeaux Red, also a favorite uh, <laughs> adult beverage of mine. And if you make the sangria with the Bordeaux, I mean, hey, even better. But to this Bordeaux Red, I have added just a touch of this here color, which is Amsterdam's uh, Permanent Red Violet Light and a bit of the Titanium White by Amsterdam. So this red by itself is like a very, very deep red. Um, and it's just not quite the shade of red that I wanted to go with these colors. So I added just a tiny bit of white and a little bit of this pink, and now it kind of fits in that color family a little bit better. And that works with most paints that uh, if the shade is just a little bit off, if that particular color is just not quite right, you can some kind, sometimes tweak it by adding uh, another color that is in your pore. These paints have been mixed. The, the two paints have been mixed one part paint to two parts mixed pouring medium. I'm in love with this stuff. I, I've i already blown through a bottle and uh, I'm, I'm very excited to, to do more uh, experimenting with this. So one part paint to two parts mix. And I did add a bit of water to that because it, it was thicker than the pigment because the, the paints have its own base. So the paints are thick. And when you add the pigment, it's, it's going to be a bit thinner than it would be with just uh, the paints in there, if you follow what I'm saying. I don't think I finished my coffee today. <laughs> Not quite thinking right. Also had a very rude awakening with a cat hanging off of my arm. Uh, Bigsby is kind of clumsy and he was literally hanging from one claw in my arm <laughs> off of the bed. <laughs> so I've, I've been a little off kilter all day. But let's mix this pigment so you can see what is happening. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards. Each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all of the information that you need, the exact recipe, paint colors, and such. This is the picture from that particular video. This box contains a tip for that particular technique, and here at the bottom we have the color palette used in that particular painting. These two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those colors. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. Use all of the colors or just use some of the colors. Mix and match the technique cards with the color palette cards and you have more combinations than you could ever paint a lifetime. Also, you can use these color palettes for any kind of art form, crochet, beadwork, what have you. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net, and also available at amazon.com. And if you get them off of Amazon, please do leave feedback. They are sticklers over there for the algorithm, and feedback is a huge part of that. I'm going to add 
just enough of this 91% alcohol to cover the bottom. There's barely anything in there. If I need to add more, I will. But in the meantime, ooh, almost forgot, wear a mask. This mask has glitter all over it that would have gone up my nose. So I'm gonna sound a bit, a little bit like uh, Darth Nihilus or <laughs> someone, someone from the Star Wars uh, trilogy or however many there are now. I am going to take a heaping spoonful. This is going to be about a half a teaspoon. And hopefully that will be enough. If you're doing a bunch of pigments, if you just have a cup of water, usually I do, don't know where I put it. Uh, if you have a cup of water, you can just dip this into a cup of water and the pigments will rinse right off, which is a lot easier to clean up than trying to wipe it with a dry uh, paper towel, then the, it will just go everywhere. So that's a cleanup tip. And now I'm just going to mix it. And okay, that's a little bit thick. So I'm just going to add a splash more of the alcohol. I would rather add more than to have too much to begin with. So if you can see, it's mixing up in there very nicely. You just need to get it wet and that will disperse. And then what I have done, just to make my life easier, I put some of this mixed pouring medium into a little condiment bottle and I will add a little bit to it. And the reason that I do this, if I were to just dump a bunch of mix in there, then A lot of the pigment may wind up sticking to the bottom and so then I'm not getting all of the lusciousness that I could and then when you pour out your cup in the bottom of your cup there will be pigments so we want to maximize the use of these beautiful pigments I don't like being wasteful okay Mask comes off. I know we all have some masks laying around, right? Okay, and I will do the same thing. I will add this in gradually just to make sure it incorporates evenly. And that is it. That is all we have to do. It's magical. I maybe could have used more pigment. Perhaps I could have. I'm still trying to get that part down. Exactly how much do I need to use? But I will say this. The mix, when it's coming out of the bottle, is white. So just like Floetrol, it makes your paint appear lighter because it's white, but it dries clear. So the pigments, even though they get a bit muted when you add the pouring medium to them, once they dry, they have that beautiful shimmer again. So the consistency, you will see, is nice and thick, mound upon a mound. And it's just that easy. So for the painting that we're gonna be doing today, I'm going to try something 
and uh, we're gonna see what happens. This is a Valentine's Day themed painting. What is Valentine's Day? What makes you think of that? Well, shades of red and hearts, right? So I'm going to try to do a wandering ring pour that I will shape into a heart. <laughs> We're gonna see what happens. I've never tried this before. I just kind of thought of it and we're going to see if this works and maybe someone will see this video and maybe no one ever will. We'll find out. So I did want to make sure that I give props to uh, the lovely Mina Villegas for uh, the recipe that she calls Tipsy Piggy recipe of how to mix these pigments using alcohol. It was genius. Don't know why I didn't think about it. First, I'm mad at myself. You win this round, Mina. So I'm going to lay down a base coat. And actually, I should have probably filled my cups first. So I'm actually going to sit this to the side. I'm up to a bang up job already, aren't I? I'm telling you, if I don't get two cups of coffee in me, I am not right. I'm just adding a touch of white in this cup. Just barely enough to cover the bottom. And then I'm going to go through my colors here. Always checking the consistency before you pour it in the cup because the sauce may thicken upon standing. And basically, I'm just doing enough of a layer to cover up the previous layer. I absolutely love this golden peach. I think it might be one of my favorite colors ever. It's so pretty. Making sure that these are even, doing my best anyway. And I think I'll do one more layer of this gorgeous sangria. Probably should have put more white in there. That's okay. I'm flying by the seat of my pants. My, my piggy pants. Just throwing caution to the wind. Because this mix is so thick, the mix pouring medium is very thick. Uh, usually I put my base coat down first, which is why I did that. But in this particular case, I think it's better to put down, 
put the paint in the cup first because this can set up on you and get a bit of a skin on it if you have a thirsty canvas. And the bigger your canvas is, the thirstier it is. And that goes, you know, especially for like giant canvases. The formula that you use to figure out how much paint you need on a canvas, the bigger you go, you need to, you need to add more because it is not going to be enough. Even though the formula says, oh, you need 91 ounces. Well, <laughs> turns out you need more than that. You needed 128 because the canvas was just soaking up that base coat. It happens. Expensive mistakes. Learn from mine. Okay, my sides are covered. Hooey! Well, here goes nothing or everything. That's going to be a lot of paint. Well, this might not be at all what I was going for, but uh, we're gonna make it pretty anyway. That's, that's what we do. So not quite hard. Oh well. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be a uh, you know, we'll see what happens kind of thing. So I am going to kind of move this around a little bit and get these two puddles to kind of join up a bit so it's easier to to manipulate it, but I certainly have enough paint on here to cover this canvas without question. If you have multiple puddles, this is really helpful, like to just kind of get them to balance out a little bit. If you're, if you have a big canvas and you need a lot of cups of paint, this is a really good way to get them to uh, balance out, so to speak. Okay, I'm gonna hit this corner first because obviously it wants to. bringing the paint back to center before I change directions.
Okay. Lots of piggies blinging in this. Yes, indeed. It is looking very pretty. So I am going to clean up my bottoms. I will scrape the bottom to keep it from pulling the paint off the sides. I'm going to touch up my corners. And then I'm going to bring you in for a close up and show you the magnificent bling of this little piggy. Back in a few. Okay, this has been sitting for a while. Had some unexpected family pop by, so uh, didn't have a chance to do the wrap up yet. You can see these edges are starting to dry and how blingy that is. Once that pouring medium starts to dry, and become clear, it is no longer changing the way that the pigments look. So, so much bling. I've often had the uh, pigments just disappear on me. And I think with the mix pouring medium and the tipsy piggy disbursement method. It is really working out wonderfully well. You can see that peach, the golden peach just sitting on top there. So I will keep this part short and I will film this again. I will, I will finish this wrap up when it is fully dry and you can see all of the super bling that is happening. But that's where it is right now while it's still wet. And uh, all right, back in a few. Okay, here it is. Would you look at the bling on this? This is, I believe this is the first time that I've ever thought that a dried, unvarnished piece was prettier than the wet version. As the pouring medium dries, it becomes clear and all of the pigment that is suspended becomes visible. And wow, oh wow, look at that sangria and the golden peach. It's like two different paintings depending on the angle that you're viewing it. I mean, would you just look at that? Amazing. I am so looking forward to having more fun with these piggies, with the tipsy piggy recipe. But there it is. Please do check out the description box below for links to my website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music and the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards for sale. And the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards are also available at Amazon. Be sure to like and share and subscribe and all that good stuff. And uh, let's see, what else? What else is in the description box? All of my affiliate links, do check that out. If you enter through those links, anything that you purchase off of those websites, I make a small commission at no additional cost to you. And it really does add up and it's super helpful. And also you will find the link to our Facebook group, go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces, ask your questions, get some inspiration. Yeah. This came out way better than uh, I thought it did. <laughs> Initially, I was worried there wasn't going to be enough contrast, but once it dried, it's amazing. I'm flabbergasted. Well, that is it for me. 
We are going to continue on with this fun collab party. And uh, yeah, so thanks for letting me kick it off. And on to the next. I hope y'all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.